What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel where today we will be back working on this 2006 Bentley Flying Spur project. But before we get to that, if you enjoy cars just as much as I do, then consider clicking the subscribe button so you can follow along with everything that goes on here on the channel. So since the last video on this project, we've had a few issues pop up. One issue involving the thermostat and the other issue involving both of the EGT sensors. And today I'm going to diagnose and correct both of those issues along with replacing the spark plugs and hopefully saving some money along the way. So let's get started started well it's been pretty close to a year since we've done a video on the Bentley and as you can see here she is in all her glory and I just hosed her off because it's pollen season and the pollen is just terrible here now I've been driving this thing around and enjoying it not having too many issues out of it but I do have an issue and I'm going to show you that right now so stepping inside here we're going to take a look and I'm going to show you what we got going on as you can see, we do have a check engine light, so we are going to need to hook up our laptop so we can find out exactly what codes this thing is throwing. With the laptop hooked up and VCDS running, we're going to go ahead and search for the engine control module. And we're going to scan it and see what kind of codes we have to come up. So it looks like we got four fault codes. Looks pretty minor. We do see that exhaust temperature sensor, which is something we've already kind of addressed. Uh, evaporative leak detection pump sensor circuit not sure what's going on there not sure what's going on with the brake booster pressure sensor and it seems like we have performance malfunction in the cooling system now I've got a pretty good idea of what's going on right here with the exhaust temperature sensor and in the cooling system and we're going to do a little bit more digging into this and I'm going to show you how you can use the software to figure out what your problem is Showing our measuring blocks in VCDS, you can see that our engine is running and you can see one of our problems right here. You can see our exhaust gas temperature sensor is showing negative 40 degrees Celsius. That shows that we definitely have a problem with that sensor. And if you remember in a previous video, I re-soldered the points on that sensor and I guess it only worked temporarily. So I guess we're going to have to address that a little further and I believe I have a solution for that. And if you look down here, it looks like we have good brake booster pressure, so I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. So our coolant temperature sensor looks pretty good, but after digging into this and reading the codes, I believe we have a problem with the thermostat, and that's not going to be too easy to address. So here is the thermostat for the Bentley, and as you can see, it's just not really just a thermostat. We do have a thermostat, but it's an actual housing. It has a tube. It has a sensor. This thing is pretty good size, as you can see. And this thing is not cheap. Now, these things range anywhere between the five all the way up to $900 range. But after doing a little bit of research and checking some part numbers, I actually picked this up. This is actually for an Audi A8 with the W12 engine. And the only difference that appears is our tube is different here. So we're going to need to swap that out. But this was direct from the factory and this was around $300. Still not a very cheap fix, but a lot cheaper than five to $700. The problem with installing this thing is this is actually underneath the intake manifold. You have to remove the upper intake manifold and the lower intake manifold to get to this. It's not really very hard, but it's not really easy at the same time. It's just kind of time consuming. With the intake manifold off, we're also going to address the exhaust temperature sensors. And you see here we have some new boards. We're going to solder these boards into the old housing. And this is a way cheaper option than replacing those sensors because those sensors are around $300 a piece. This set of boards was around $80 a piece and they came all the way from Poland. Also, we have a complete set of brand new spark plugs that we're going to put in you might as well you already have the intake manifold off it's just something that needs to be done because you can't get to the front cylinders on this engine without having the intake manifold off and i believe these plugs are around eight dollars a piece which is a big savings over fourteen dollars a piece and of course we're going to replace the intake manifold gasket now believe it or not this intake manifold gasket was not really that expensive i think it was around 25 dollars and we have new intake manifold bolts now from what i understand these are actually magnesium and i read on the forums that people were reusing the old ones and breaking them off into the intake manifold and i definitely did not want that to happen so that was just cheap insurance at about five dollars a piece so now that we have all our parts, let's go take a look at the car and see what exactly needs to be removed to get all this stuff on. Looking underneath the hood or the bonnet as you want to call it, 
here's our engine and you can see that we do have quite a few things that we need to remove we need to remove our covers we need to remove our air boxes we of course we've got hoses on the sides on both sides we've got probably some other hoses in the front and the back stuff that you can't see right now we've got some electrical connections but you can see the gist of it this intake manifold all this needs to come off and you need to be really careful with this stuff you want to use all hand tools because you have magnesium bolts we have this intake manifold which is actually magnesium and you don't want to damage it because it is like crazy crazy expensive so you get all this stuff off we'll have access to the plugs we'll have access to our exhaust temperature sensors and underneath the lower part of this intake manifold somewhere right in here is our thermostat that we need to replace now you want to make sure you don't have any kind of debris or trash anywhere around any of this because you're going to be opening up the engine and you definitely don't want anything falling in so we've got some areas to clean back here on the cowl as you can see and there's going to be some other areas like if i remove this panel you can see we do have a little bit of trash so you're going to want to vacuum all that stuff out and cover up everything and make sure everything stays nice and clean because that is very important you don't want anything getting into your engine Now the air boxes are taken off the engine as you can see and we have our intake manifold we're going to leave that on for the time being and we're going to go ahead and we're going to address the exhaust temperature sensors that we have an issue with so the driver's side one is actually underneath the intake manifold kind of hard to see but it is right there right there where that bolt is in that red connector and you can take that bolt out and it'll slide back and we can get it out of the way to where we can work on it and over here on the passenger side you can see there's our exhaust temperature sensor and it's pretty easy to get to so we're going to go ahead and pull both of the caps off of both of these sensors and replace the boards that are inside The old board is out as you can see and it wasn't too hard it was just a little time consuming and you can see here we have our new board it pretty much is self-explanatory you're just going to solder those three wires there solder those two wires there and it'll be complete The second board is in and now it's time to seal this thing up and bolt it back down. Both EGTs are back installed as you can see and the next task at hand I'm going to start on the spark plugs. Now you can see you can get the four on this side and four over here on this side and i'm gonna go ahead and knock out those four before i go taking the intake manifold off because like i said i want to leave the intake manifold on as long as possible so we have less risk of getting any kind of foreign contaminants in the intake system i'll address the other two that's here underneath this side and underneath this side once we take the intake manifold off
eight plugs down, four more to go, and now the fun part begins. We get to remove the intake manifold, which is not really that bad, but it just kind of seems like it's worse than what it actually is. And you can see here is an old spark plug. Now they pretty much all look like this. They do have a little bit of wear. The gap was acceptable. We didn't really have any problems with them, but you know, we got brand new ones in there now, so we don't have to worry about that. So let's continue on. Let's start disconnecting some lines and stuff back here and our hose clamps, and we can go ahead and lift this intake manifold off. With the intake manifold off, you can see the W12 engine in all its glory. And you can see it's not really a very big engine. It takes up a lot of room here, but it's not really that big. And pulling the intake manifold was not really that big of a job, but we just pulled the upper, not the lower. You can see the lower, we had these fuel rails. We got all this stuff to contend with, and I'm really not looking forward to that part. But before we get to that, we're gonna go ahead and replace the two spark plugs on each side that we haven't replaced yet. And there you have it. All 12 spark plugs are changed. Now we can address the thermostat, which if you look right here where this hard line is, and this other hard line, our thermostat housing's right underneath here. So, next step is to remove this lower intake manifold, which ought to be fun, and we can get right to our thermostat. Now to remove this lower intake manifold, of course we're going to have to remove our perimeter bolts. We have a coolant line that runs right across the top, and we're going to need to undo our injector clips. Now hopefully we don't have to go in there and start pulling these fuel rails because that can cause other issues. You can damage the seals on the injectors and we'll have to replace those. And those are not readily available, you know, just from the parts store. So we're gonna start with the simple stuff first and see if we can get this thing off without having to tear too much of anything else off. The lower intake manifold is out and unfortunately I did have to pull this fuel rail up and pull the injectors up so I could get it out. So out of precaution, I'm going to go back and I'm going to replace all these injector seals. But you can see right here, this is our thermostat housing. And you can see our tube. And if you look at our replacement, you can see the tube goes in the opposite direction. So we're going to need to swap that over. And it looks like the wiring harness is correct. It runs along to the back, to the back of the head back there where we need to disconnect it. So... I'm going to get some rags underneath some of this. I don't know how much coolant's going to come out, but I'm sure we're going to lose some. But we're going to get this all tidied up and get it ready so we can start undoing some of these clamps. The thermostat is out and here's the spot where the thermostat was and you can see it's not really a lot of room there. But let's go take a look at the old thermostat because I believe I found our problem. Looking at the old thermostat, I've released this so we can pull this thermostat mechanism out. And if you look, right when we get this thing out you can see exactly what the problem was. Look at that seal, it's all gone. Over three quarters of it is just completely gone. Now the fault code we showed was showing that this thing was actually opening and closing, but it was taking longer for the car to warm up than it should, which means this thermostat was leaking. And from seeing that, it definitely was. Getting this new thermostat housing in should be pretty straightforward. We need to remove that tube and swap it out with the old tube on our old thermostat housing. And then this thing's pretty much ready to go back in. The new thermostat housing is in and you can see we have swapped out our black pipe. Everything is hooked up, it's bolted down, it's torqued to spec, and it's pretty much ready for assembly. It's just reverse order of what we did. Lower intake, upper intake, hook up our hoses and our vacuum connections. And of course, we are gonna put new O-rings over here on these fuel injectors. So let's get to it. 
It's all back together as you can see and now it's the moment of truth it's time to start this thing up and see if all of our issues have been solved now at this point we do have our coolant topped off and we are hoping that all the hoses are connected and all of the wiring connections are connected I double checked and triple checked so I'm pretty sure we're good now I really didn't lose that much coolant and I'll show you how much coolant I actually lost I would say half a quart three quarters of a quart not very much so let's go hit the key and see if this thing runs let's see if she'll run now obviously we did have some air in the fuel system since we did pull those fuel injectors but that has all cleared up and as you can see it is purring right along it is idling smooth we don't have any check engine lights and now we're going to do our visual inspection we're going to see if we have any kind of leaks which well you can't really see much because the intake manifold covers it up but we don't seem to see any kind of cool leaks or smell anything or smell any kind of fuel so everything seems to look pretty good underneath the hood so now we need to hook up the laptop and that's really going to tell us what's going on and that'll really give us our answers did we really fix our issues with our thermostat and those exhaust temp sensors now once we hooked up the laptop we realized right off the bat that we definitely had a problem while the thermostat was operating correctly the problem that we had was with the egt boards with a negative temperature reading and an implausible signal code something definitely was not right so i would reached out to the guys over at sid motorsports and they realized that they had sent me the wrong egt boards so after a couple weeks they sent me the correct egt boards and i got those installed and they're working just like they should issues like this show you that things just don't always go as smooth as they should and the main thing is the stay focused and to continue on and you'll get your problem solved and that's the main mindset that i've had on this project since i picked it up a little over three years ago so until next time i'd like to say thank you for watching be sure to check out all my other videos on all my other projects and if you like what you've seen be sure to click that subscribe button click the bell so you'll get the notifications and you can also follow me on facebook and instagram